Hi everyone and welcome back to John Florey channel. I am Mary and I'm here to talk about Phaeton to his friend Florio. So much has been said about this sonnet. Since it involves John Florio, it is important that you know the truth about it. Before we start, if you are new here and you are intrigued by John Florio and you also like Shakespeare, Giordano Bruno, Elizabethan writers, don't forget to subscribe. Now, let's start. First thing, what is a Phaeton to his friend Florio? It is a sonnet published in Second Fruits, the work that John Florio published in 1591. Phaeton to his friend Florio is an important sonnet that has created lots of debate throughout the centuries. Uh, different scholars, Shakespearean and not, have tried to guess the personality behind Phaeton. Why? Because it is one of the earliest sonnets of the Elizabethan era even before Philip Sidney, Astrophel and Stella, and Samuel Daniel Delia of 1592. So this sonnet was written before the sonnet's boom. Someone was so avant-garde that anticipated Sidney, anticipated Daniel. So the question is, who is the author behind Phaeton? Now, before answering this question, let's briefly analyze the character. In literature, Phaeton is one of Ovid's best stories, charged with exciting detail. Phaeton, the half-mortal son of Apollo, wants to drive his father chariot, the sun. Ignoring his father's warnings of a potentially disastrous ride, Phaeton, visions of glory in his head, stubbornly forges ahead. The chariot ride develops as predicted by Apollo and Phaeton plunges to his death into the sea. Now, this sonnet suggests that there is great confidence between Phaeton and his friend Florio. I will analyze in details the sonnet, but now it is not important that you know the details about it. A brief description of it at the moment will suffice. The sonnet shows that Phaeton knows John Florio very well and knows that Florio is implicated in controversial activities and that he is attacked by his enemies like Robert Greene, who is mentioned in the sonnet. So Phaeton is not just a close friend of Florio, he is someone who collaborates with him and supports his cause. So, now I will review some of the candidates that have been proposed throughout the centuries. Let's start with Francis Eads, Florios and Shakespeare scholar, who suggested that Phaeton was Samuel Daniel. Samuel Daniel was an English poet, playwright and historian in the late Elizabethan and early Jacobean eras. He was an innovator in a wide range of literary genres. His best known works are the sonnet cycle Delia and the epic poem The Civil Wars between the houses of Lancaster and York. He was considered one of the preeminent authors of his time and his works had a significant influence on contemporary writers, including John Florio. They met at Oxford and there began a long-lasting friendship until their death. So Daniel was Florio's closest friend. So is Phaeton really Samuel Daniel? No. First of all, why Samuel Daniel would sign himself as Phaeton? He never signed himself in this way. Most importantly, the sonnet is not written in Daniel's style. Daniel had a very different style from Phaeton. Uh, he was a very close friend of Florio, he called him his brother, and he brought several surprising poems to Florio in his works, but never signed himself as a Phaeton. I don't think that Daniel ever signed himself under a pseudonym during his career. So no, I don't think that the sonnet is written by Samuel Daniel. Next one. Christopher Marlowe. Christopher Marlowe was an English playwright, poet and translator of the Elizabethan era. Marlowe was the first to achieve critical reputation for his use of blank verse, which became the standard for the era. Now, I see a difference between Marlowe's style and Phaeton's sonnet, even if there are some similarities in this case. But the greatest issue here is were Marlowe and Florio friends? 
Marla was a university wit. Florio wasn't. Florio law literature to and poetry, but didn't graduate. He was a self-made man, and they belonged to different circles of friends. They certainly knew each other because they both worked as spies for Francis Walsingham during the captivity of Mary Queen of Scots. Uh, Florio certainly admired Marlowe and his works, but it is known that Marlowe was a bit against immigrants, his works show a bit of xenophobia, fear for strangers that was spreading in London at the time. For example, the famous poem Against Immigrants, written some time before Marlowe's death, attached to the door of the church Austin Friars, the same church where the father of John Florio, Michelangelo worked as a preacher. That poem was probably written by either Thomas Kidd, a friend of Marlowe, or by Marlowe himself. It is also said that probably Thomas Kidd was involved in writing pamphlets uh, against foreigners. Now, I think that Florio admired Marlowe. He liked his works and was influenced by his style. But they were two different personalities. They came from different social classes. They had different visions. Marlowe cannot be described as a friend of Florio, that's for sure. Thomas Nash, Florio's greatest enemy, paid homage to the dead writer in Nash Lantern Staff, published in 1599. The same work in which Nash attacked John Florio. Nash had fashioned Marlowe in his own image, so it is clear that Florio and Marlowe belonged to two different groups, and he couldn't support so openly John Florio and go against the university wits like Thomas Nash or Robert Greene, as he was, people who despise and vehemently attack John Florio during their career because he was a foreign who dared to go against the rules of the time, he didn't just want to be a teacher, uh, the usual standard job that um, for the foreigners were given. Florio felt himself as a talented writer and he demonstrated in his works. So he loved to collaborate with his colleagues and friends. So he wasn't a normal foreigner, he was an outsider. And it's why he was so viciously attacked. Marlov couldn't support Florio and his secret sort of uh, mission. He couldn't write such a sonnet in which he supported Florio and also attacked wits like Robert Greene. So no, Marlov wasn't Phaeton. I haven't mentioned that there is also an important connection between the sonnet and Florio concerning Shakespeare authorship question. What I mean? I mean that those who believe that Shakespeare uh, didn't write his works and propose alternative candidates try to prove that this sonnet was written by their favorite candidate. For example, you can find fans of De Vere who claim that the sonnet was written by him. All of this because this sonnet has a great importance concerning Shakespeare's style and the first form of Shakespearean sonnet. Now, the problem is that when they try to prove uh, their theory, most of them ignore fundamental facts, like the connection between John Florio and their candidate, and for this reason, they distort facts to try to prove that their favorite candidate was the author of Phaeton um, in order to prove that he was Shakespeare. Now, for example, to address the uh, De Vere theory, uh, Florio... Mm, didn't know De Vere personally. De Vere wasn't in Florio's circle of friends and acquaintances, so De Vere wasn't a friend of Florio, and he wasn't the kind of personality that Florio would have liked as a friend anyway. Uh, if you read Florio's works, if you know John Florio, his life, um, you would understand that Florio's closest friends were writers like Philip Sidney, Edmund Spencer, Samuel Daniel, Giordano Bruno, Ben Johnson, real writers, great authors. De Vere is a minor, very minor figure of the Elizabethan era. I know that 
a lot of people nowadays try to like you know boost him up and try to promote uh, promote uh, him as a sort of great author i have nothing against him actually many fans of the via write me uh, write me emails asking me about john florio because of course when they um, when you are a fan of shakespeare you always encounter john florio in your way so Uh, they ask me a lot of questions regarding John Florio and they are very kind and very sweet so I have nothing against them of course um, but it is also time to address this speculation and to say the truth about it so um, De Vere was an aristocrat and many aristocrats love literature poetry and they were engaged in promoting arts many of them wrote poems were involved in theatre as I've explained the, the same did Henry Rosley the Earl of Southampton it was very common um, but there is a difference between real authors real writers like Florio Spencer Sidney who marked the era in which they lived with their works and started a revolution in the English language and English literature with their works. You can't compare these writers with amateur and dilettante aristocrats who did it for fun and as a hobby. You can't put these people on the same level. You can't, okay? Again, I have nothing against him or against those who believe Otherwise, I mean, you are free to believe what you want, but I want to distinguish uh, real documented facts from bias and distorted vision promoted by fans who, of course, are excited about a topic, but sometimes they degenerate into a mayhem. So, the Veer, of course, is not Phaeton, and he didn't write a sonnet. And most importantly, he wasn't a friend of John Florio. And if someone tells you otherwise, remember this, they are lying. Another candidate proposed is Edmund Spencer. Edmund Spencer was an English poet, best known for The Fairy Queen, an epic poem and fantastical allegory celebrating the Tudor dynasty and Elizabeth I. He is recognized as one of the premier craftsmen of national modern English verse and is often considered one of the greatest poets in English language. John Florio knew Edmund Spencer. They were close friends and John Florio mentions Edmund Spencer in Second Freud, the same work where Phaeton is published. Um, it has been also suggested that Spencer Rosalind was John Florio's mistress and concubine and later, much later, his wife Rose. Florio had two wives and possibly other lovers in his life. His first wife he married when he was 20 years old uh, died she died around the first years of 1590 1591 he later met rose and they spent many years together before getting married Florio got married uh, like seven years before dying like in 1618 um, and they spent many years together before getting married some Spencer scholars have suggested that Rose uh, this woman was Rosalind of Edmund Spencer we don't know if this is true or not um, some scholars have suggested this theory but we know for certain that Florio knew Spencer very well, that he knew his, that he knew his works and that they were very close friends. So could Spencer be Phaeton? The sonnet used the Spencerian structure A, B, B, A, A, B, B, A, C, D, C, D, E, E. Um, problem is, first, why Spencer would sign himself like that? I mean, such a renowned poet would have signed it with his name. And another problem is that in 1591, Spencer was in Hampshire. So, no. Phaeton is not 
Edmund Spencer. Now, in the next video, I will give you my opinion on Phaeton and who I think is the best candidate for this sonnet. Let me know if you have ever heard of other candidates. What do you think of those that I have mentioned? Do you agree with me or you don't agree with me? Let me know in the comments. Don't forget to subscribe if you are new and stay resolute. Bye!